Venue Synthesis, JBL's next generation 3D acoustic simulation software, is a powerful, free application that lets users design and simulate acoustic coverage and prepare JBL systems for rigging in any environment at any scale. Once opened, the application home screen will be displayed. From the toolbar, new projects can be created, an existing project can be opened, supported 3D geometry can be imported into a new file, or one of the factory example files can be opened. These example files are excellent resources to get familiar with the application. Below, keyframe images of recent projects will populate the screen. Selecting any project will open it. Typical file operations like New, Open, and Save can be found in the hamburger menu, and a list of recent projects that can be opened will be displayed on the right. Select project details to record or edit metadata for the design. Information entered here will be printed into various project exports explored later. Application level options, including measurement units, can be accessed from the settings button. The application is divided into three modes listed across the top of the screen. Each mode serves a specific purpose throughout the system design process. A new file automatically opens into the Venue tab, where users can either draw or import venue geometry that accurately represents the space the audio system will be designed for. The largest portion of the screen is the 3D workspace. Clicking and dragging with the left mouse button will orbit the workspace, and clicking and dragging with the right mouse button will pan. Scrolling zooms in or out. Select the Fit to View button to reset zooming. The gizmo control in the bottom right shows workspace orientation, but can also position the workspace into two-dimensional views. The solid colors represent positive axes, and the outline colors are the negative axes. The reset button reorients the workspace to the default view. At the top left side of the window is the tags toolbar. Tags will be used to organize the various venue geometry components into useful groups for visibility or selection. Selecting a tag highlights all of the planes that have been assigned to it. Hiding a tag will hide those planes. Select the Venue Synthesis logo to save the project and return to the home screen. To start a new design, select the plus button or New Project from the menu. A blank 3D workspace will open into design mode. Before drawing, it is recommended that tags be created to organize the various elements of the new design. Create tags by right-clicking in the Tag toolbar. The origin marker in the center of the 3D workspace is where X, Y, and Z coordinates are all equal to zero. Venues should be drawn and oriented in the positive Y direction. The tools needed to draw or import a new venue can be found in the toolbar above the workspace. Select the Add button, then Rectangle or Polygon to draw basic geometry. Next, select the origin plane the geometry will be drawn on. Click and drag to draw the shape. The Properties panel on the right side of the screen provides settings and position controls over the newly drawn plane. Use the Tags dropdown to assign the new geometry to one of the created tags. The plane dropdown defines the intended purpose of the new surface. Architectural planes are acoustically impermeable objects, such as walls or ceilings. Audience planes are areas where listeners will exist in the space. Audience planes will need to have the listening height defined as seated or standing. Audience planes map SPL by default. Virtual planes represent acoustically permeable reference surfaces and are drawn in blue. Below, absolute geometry can quickly be defined using the length and width fields. And this rectangle's position relative to the origin can be controlled. In the Tools dropdown are tools to manipulate or measure venue geometry. Hotkeys to quickly access these functions and others are printed to the right of the button. With a plane selected, the Move tool can be used to visually reposition planes manually. The extrude tool is used to turn flat planes into hollow, three-dimensional spaces. To use it, select a plane and either drag the arrow vertically or enter a vertical extrusion distance in the box below. 
Planes have a front and a back side. In this case, the user is behind the two walls closest to the viewer. As the venue is rotated, planes will change so as to never block the view or the ability to draw new geometry inside the listening space. Toggling on transparency from the view tools turns all planes into semi-see-through boundaries and can make it easier to select a flip plane from the outside. To keep the model organized, the new plane should be assigned to a tag, which can now be done by holding the shift key, multi-selecting the new planes, and assigning the tag in the properties panel. It is important that boundaries and listening planes face the loudspeaker system, so in some cases, like for this drawn stage, it is necessary to flip a plane's default orientation. With transparency active, you can no longer click through flipped planes, but because the venue space has been assigned to a tag, the entire space can be hidden in the tag browser so that it is easier to flip the planes making up the stage. Right click on any plane and select reverse or use the I hot key to flip the plane. Transparency can be toggled off and the venue tag can be unhidden. The Show Audience Areas button can be a helpful tool to visualize the height of the listener's ears over the drawn audience plane. Using the drawing tools, existing 2D plans can be used to create venue geometry. Within the Add menu, select Image or PDF. In the pop-up, select a valid file. Then, select the plane the drawing will reside on. The scaling window will open. Here, set the two points over a known distance on the prints. Enter the dimension of the known distance and hit Next. Define where the drawing will live relative to the origin of the venue by dragging the origin indicator to the desired location. Hit Finish and the drawing is now visible on the selected plane. When selected, the Properties panel provides transform controls to shift the drawing position's XYZ coordinates or rotation. The Pen tool can be used to trace over the image and create accurate venue geometry. Select the Pen tool from the Add menu, then define the origin plane on which to draw. Click at each corner over the drawing. then back at the origin point to complete the shape. As with other drawn geometry, tag the new plane and set its intended purpose. Another powerful drawing tool in the Venue tab is the Special Object Creator, which is used to quickly turn two-dimensional slices of a venue into complex 3D geometry. When clicked, the Special Object Creator, or SOC for short, will open a new window below the 3D workspace. Select the plus button and then select one of the three SOC types. Straight SOCs have no curvature between the front and rear of the geometry. Curved SOCs have a variable front and a variable rear geometry width to create fan-shaped objects. Revolution SOCs wrap the geometry around a central point to a variable degree. 2D geometry can be manually entered on the right side of the SOC window by inputting depth and height coordinates into new points, or by using a distance versus angle methodology. If using distance versus angle, the rangefinder location must be defined relative to the venue origin here. As points are added, a visual representation of the geometry is drawn on the left side of the SOC cut view window and in the 3D workspace. Alternative to manually entering points, while in depth height mode, right-click in the SOC cut view to add a PDF or image underlay. Scale and set the origin as before, and then points can be manually added on top of the image from the cut view.
in the parameters window, give the new special object a name. Depending on the SOC type used, additional settings such as width or curvature are defined below. Special objects are made up of a series of simple planes. As such, each one can be selected or multi-selected, tagged to a control group, and have its purpose defined. Complete special objects are listed and displayed in the objects tree on the left. Left-click any object to make geometry or parameter changes in the editor window. Right-click on any object in the list to display additional controls. Here, special objects can be duplicated and mirrored across axes. Or, the points that make up special objects can be copied and pasted directly into a new special object of similar or different type. Manipulate the location of the entire selected object using the rotation and the X, Y, and Z coordinate fields. This can be a powerful tool to quickly draw arena or stadium style venues. For situations where a complete venue drawing is already created, 3D geometry can be imported directly into the workspace from the Add button in the toolbar. In the file pop-up, select the valid CAD, DXF, XFC, or GCF file. GCF files are the native venue synthesis room format and can be exported from 3D models in SketchUp using the JBL plugin or from venue synthesis directly. Files exported from SketchUp will be imported with all of the plane tags as defined in SketchUp. Once geometry has been imported, use tags to select or multi-select planes by holding the Shift key to set the plane types. Multiple planes or an entire venue can be shifted and rotated to align the model with the origin by selecting all of the relevant tags, right-clicking over the model, and mousing down on the transform by command. With a venue drawn or imported, select the acoustics tab. Here, loudspeaker sources will be added to the venue, configured, and refined. At the top left corner of the application is the systems group toolbox. System groups consist of one or multiple arrays serving a similar function. Examples of system groups would be mains, outfills, ground subs, or front fills. Each system group has a unique color identifier. Expand any system group here to see the individual arrays or positions that make up the group. Loudspeaker models are listed in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Expand the dropdowns or use the search bar to find a specific model. To add the speaker and create a new system group, drag it into the workspace. Depending on the specific product added, a new source configuration window will be displayed where parameters such as array quantity and orientation are defined. Fills and subwoofers added to the venue will display a similar configuration window with slightly different options. Select Add System and the new arrays will be shown. The white lines drawn from the speaker represent the impact points of that cabinet. A selected array will be outlined in yellow. When selected, arrays can be hidden or shown by right-clicking on an array in the workspace. Alternatively, right-click on a group in the Groups panel to hide or show arrays for the arrays in the group. Double-click on the group to rename it. Expand the group to name each array. The properties displayed in the properties bar on the right will be for the selected speaker or array. In the general tab, the system group name and color can be edited and the quantity parameters adjusted. The layout tab provides control over axes alignment, spacing, and absolute position of the group. The X, Y, and Z fields here affect every array in the group. A system can be manually moved, spaced, or rotated by using the respective tools located in the toolbar or accessed via their individual hotkeys listed.
The 2D view accessed from the gizmo can be very handy when manually positioning and spacing arrays in the 3D workspace. The spacing tool can be especially handy when setting ground subwoofers or front fills. Changes to cabinet quantity, angle, or hardware selections that create unsafe configurations will trigger a warning in the notifications panel here. Once reviewed, these issues must be corrected. By default, layout changes affect the entire array group, but setting layout to manual method allows each inside-out symmetry group to be manipulated. This is easier to understand when there are more than two arrays in a group. For completely asymmetrical systems, turning symmetry off will allow independent position control over each array from the workspace or the group parameters dropdown. Restore the group to the default automatic layout method and inside-out symmetry to resync the arrays of the group to unified layout controls. Use the venue tools or the parameters in the XYZ fields and aiming tab to point the arrays in the desired direction. The acoustics mode is split into 3D and 2D functions. The toggle at the top right of the screen flips between the two view types. 2D mode shows a cut view of the selected array and any listening planes that exist in line with the array. Toggle between groups or arrays in 2D mode by selecting them from the grouping panel. The cabinet section lists all of the speakers in the array with angle and gain controls. The model dropdown allows for configuration of mixed arrays. The speakers are grouped by circuits, which are indicated with unique color identifiers. Circuit sizes can be modified from the amplification window. When set to custom, circuits can be selected and ungrouped, then using multi-select, regrouped into whatever configuration is preferred. In the top right of the cut view, select Auto Display from the Views button. Hit the Calculate Angle button to display the system across the listening planes. To refine Auto Display coverage to a defined area, right-click on the plane and set Start and Stop Display Markers. Venue overshoot can also be defined in degrees below. Cabinet angles can be manually refined by dragging the ray trace on the 2D cut view screen or using the controls in the properties window. Select the SPL over distance view to plot the sound pressure level variance of the array over the various listening planes. SPL over distance can be plotted as a frequency range or as multiple single frequencies. The measurement views plot a frequency response graph of the selected array at up to eight virtual microphone positions. To take a virtual measurement at any position, select a point on the 2D cut view and a new probe will be added. Each probe has a color and that color matches a response curve plotted below. Turn on or off the average across all active probes with a toggle switch. The LACP button in the Properties panel provides access to the array calibration filters, which can be used to further refine system response. Array filters affect all circuits in the array. Circuit filters affect only the selected circuit. When a ground deployed subwoofer array is selected, the 2D view changes to a top down cut view rather than a side view. Use the subwoofer group properties controls on the right side of the screen to refine parameters such as subwoofer orientation, spacing, product type, and cardioid configuration. Subwoofer horizontal response can be mapped by a single frequency or by one-third or full octave averages. Hit Calculate to plot the SPL over the venue. Should coverage need to be widened, electronic delay steering can be applied to the system. Set the opening angle and apply the delays. Delay times will be added to each container and are visible from the right side subwoofer's dropdown in the Properties panel. Select Calculate to see the effect of the optimization.
back in 3D view, enable the mapping switch to visualize the acoustic response of all components in the system. In the mapping window at the bottom of the screen, select the signal type from the dropdown. The different signal types available each help evaluate system headroom for various use cases. The combined effect of all unmuted system components will be plotted over the listening planes. The resolution of the plot can be toggled with controls under the color scale. Click anywhere on a listening plane to add an SPL flag. Unlimited SPL flags can be added. Right click to remove SPL flags. Select any array, then navigate to the DSP tab within the group parameters to make gain adjustments. Changes to the system group's DSP or mute states will result in the mapping being cleared. The gain of the signal generator can be increased to plot max SPL. As the gain is increased and the output is remapped, system components in limit will display an orange limit icon in the system group's toolbar. Hover the mouse over any array or system group in the system group's toolbar to toggle its mute, solo, or visibility state. Items that are muted will not be included in the SPL mapping. Toggle the solo button on any line to include only that item in the mapping. Hiding an item will remove it from the 3D view and discount its response from the mapping. Architectural or virtual planes such as this stage can be mapped to as well. To do so, return to the Venue tab. Select the plane and check Include this plane in mapping. Back in Acoustics mode, Enable Mapping. Then select the Mapping Options button and select the plane to include, in this case, Architectural. Selecting the environmental settings above the color scale opens the application settings window. Modifying any of the parameters in the environmental settings tab will affect the mapping outputs and array response calculations. In the mapping options tab, complex mapping can be enabled and the mapping patch size can be modified. Larger patch sizes will decrease the calculation times when mapping output. It is also possible to map the delay spread between system components. Back in the Mapping tab, under Plotting, select Delay Spread. Set the signal type, then calculate to visualize the results. The color scale in milliseconds is displayed on the left and can be modified for music, speech, or custom thresholds between the green, amber, and red plotted colors. Time offset flags can be added, similar to SPL flags. To optimize delay for each system component, select the Delay Optimizer from the toolbar. Select each group or array to be included in the optimization, then click Optimize. The Delay Optimization algorithm will calculate the best delay times for each system component, and then report that time on the right. Apply the new delays and exit the optimizer by selecting Done. Remapping the delay spread shows the effect of the new component delay times. Delay times are applied to each array in the DSP tab under the group parameters in the properties bar. After loudspeakers have been added to the venue and optimized, select the Mechanics tab to validate and fine-tune equipment mechanical settings. Select a group or individual array from the system groups panel. A side and top view of the array or speaker will be displayed in the workspace. The center of gravity is indicated with an amber line and the suspension points are shown as green dots or lines. On the right side of the screen, configure array suspension options such as frame type, suspension points, and orientation. The top of the screen shows a detailed view of an array's suspension points, which can be zoomed and panned. For single point suspension, this view can be used to select the correct A, B, or C extension bar position. For two-point or quad-point hangs, this view can be used to change the front and rear pick points by selecting the point, then selecting a new shackle hole. Selecting 3D mode from the top right displays a high-resolution rendering of the completed array that can be orbited. The top right-hand corner of the screen provides critical weight and span information for each point, as well as the rated array safety factor. 
The bottom left hand side of the screen displays each cabinet in the array's pin and angle position. Select the QR icon in this tab to display the ArrayLink QR codes for all system groups in the design. The updated ArrayLink application can be used to sequentially scan each of these codes into an organized project folder for easy system deployment in the field. Alternatively, export a completed rigging manual for the entire system from the menu. After saving the manual to your computer, it will open into the default PDF viewing application. All system groups will be included in the export and will include information on rigging suspended systems as well as spacing for ground deployed systems. From all of us here at JBL, thank you for watching and happy designing.